Hi everyone, I'm back with Mary Hall Scott and we are going to be talking about the Tones of Curve Blend set two for Fitzpatrick three to four clients. Hi Mary, welcome back. Nice Thank you so you. much, I'm happy to be back. Great to see you. Um, so yes, so Mary, you've um, just been telling me that you've been playing with um, these colours of set two of the Tones of Perma Blend. Well, it's amazing because I think, you know, if they saw the first one, most people know like I'm Scandinavian, Midwest, U.S., all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I thought I would like the first kit. Well, I love the first kit, but the second kit is amazing. So, um, you know, you know, us, the, those people that have been doing it for a while and we're experienced and we're science minded, you know, I. I told you on the last one that I had been practicing while well, I got out my real skin because I love how the real skin shows the composition of the colors oh. and you can actually see the breakdown of the colors because of the texture of it. And I'm telling you, I found my two favorites. So Blowout Brown and Tea and Toast are phenomenal. When I looked at the color compensation, the brown is beautiful and the Tea and Toast, I can actually see some of the, the black in it. and uh, I don't know about you, but one technique that I like to do, even if I use like the kit one and I do my little blonde girl, my little Norwegian girl, I like to take a darker color and I call it sprinkling on top, Yeah, you know, to add some dimension. Yeah. And, and I'm definitely like grabbing kit too, even if I I've got a blonde. Well. Yeah, I do that, Mary. And I tend to do it a little bit underneath, especially if people don't have very much natural hair. I'll do it underneath so that... Um, I get a little bit of texture, a little bit of depth, maybe a little bit of 3D colour so it makes their eyebrows look like they're textured and stand away from their face. So I know exactly what you're speaking about when you say that. Absolutely. Um, it Absolutely. does surprise me that those are the two colours that you've been drawn to. The second kit is actually our bestseller in the UK. Um, okay. And with uh, blowout brown and tea and toast being everybody's favourite, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, <laughs> they are my go-to colours as well for people that maybe go, getting into sort of the chocolatey brown colours. Um, they are my go-to colours also to you. So um, I'm really pleased that you like those. Um, yeah. With blowout brown and tea and toast, I think what's nice about them is unlike some of the other. Um, brands that are outside of Perma Blend, they're not heavy on the blue um, pigment pigment colouring or the red um, in those. So you're not going to get that leftover ready orange residue or leftover bluey residue when they fade. So and that's what I love about Perma Blend pigments. So I wanted to make sure that that um, went into these mixes as well. So really great that you've noticed that. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's absolutely true, because looking at my practice skin and looking at the composition of these, it, they're beautiful. But, you know, one of the advantages and I'm like, I'm a lucky girl because my <laughs> two favorite colors are neutral. So it's so easy, you know, to I, I added just a little bit of that trusty rusty. Yeah. And, and it was beautiful. So when you've got them, your favorite colors are neutral. It's so easy yeah. to just warm or cool a bit if you need to. Like I said, yeah. it's it's a. Uh, so yeah, I'm lucky. Those are beautiful colors. The compositions are beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to see more of your work with those, Mary. Um, just to go over, just in case anyone didn't see our um, video yesterday um, about the kit one, they are pre-modified pigments, so you don't have to um, modify them at all, although you mm -hmm. can um, warm them up further if you want to. And you have got the second page of our color ruler that will tell you exactly who this client, these pigments, uh, let me start that again, exactly who these pigments are perfect for. Um, and they're just so easy to use, which is what we wanted to have them, you know, when we made them, we wanted them to be easy to use. Mm -hmm. And so um, this ruler follows the first ruler exactly, which is really what I like because all the information is here for every kit, what to do if you want to warm it or darken it or light it, who the exact client is for, the warmth value of it even. So it, it, if you go to the second kit, you have all the same great information that you yeah. had in the first kit. 
Yeah, it really is a handy tool to have. I think, like you say, for people that are brand new to our industry and people that um, have been doing it a long time, um, it's nice to have something just to help you out choosing a colour for your client. Yeah. Oh, and one little tip I can share. So when I was playing, right, see this handy little <laughs> pull yeah. here? Um, by the way, we should talk about this too, because this is amazing. Yeah, but I put my pull in backwards. <laughs> it was hard to get out. So just one little tip, something you might yeah, not think of is right yeah. <laughs> always put it in the right way. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, along with the ruler. I'll show you this actually, Mary, because you can be one of the first people to see it. They are on pre-order at the moment, but we have got a really nice stand oh. coming. So you might not have to keep them as much as the box is really <laughs> lovely. Um, you may not have to keep them um, in the box. You can keep them in the stand. And um, they've got the names along the shelf of all the pigments so that, um, you know, you can put them where they belong. I like, I like that. I like perfect. to be organized like that with my <laughs> That's perfect. So yeah, and, uh, and then like I said, what you're putting in the boxes is so fabulous too because yeah. it describes every Fitzpatrick. It, it's just, there's so much information in here that helps, like you said, either the new artist or the one that, the experienced artist. It's it's just amazing, you know, the descriptions me, in I, here. Yeah, I think for me, I wanted to put this information in there, Mary, because I think that it's, a lot more than just thinking about is your client warm or cool when I am considering a colour for a client. So I call it my 360 degrees of, of colour because it really is the whole um, it thing, my whole thoughts what I, are encompassing the colour theory when I'm thinking about it for my client. And I just put it all in there, what I'm thinking. Um, and hopefully that will help people have that information and choose their colour for their clients. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, speaking of 360 degrees, look what else is sitting in front of me. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I table. love this also. Thank you. So this is our colour compass, and it's a little bit different to a normal artist's colour wheel in that it wasn't that long ago I was having a discussion on one of our forums with um, somebody who is a member and she was saying that she had a client who had very red skin so it was very vascular um, and so therefore on her color wheel on her artist color wheel the opposite to red was green so she was going to add a really ashy green based pigment and I kind of thought no that's really wrong but it wasn't until she said that but it's on my color wheel Naomi that I thought, mm -hmm. okay, she's right, it is on the colour wheel. So it, half of the colour wheel or a third of the colour wheel is not relevant to permanent makeup technicians. So we wanted to do this um, double-sided colour compass, one for colour correction. So if people have already got colours in their skin, pigments in their skin, how you can correct that. And then the other side, for this actual purpose that I'm telling you about for the vascular skin, having being able to look at the different skin types and thinking how that's going to act um, how that's going to add to your healed outcome so for example if you look for the pink um, ruddy vascular skin red skin it tells you that you need either an orange based pigment or you need to add more orange whereas a normal artist color wheel will tell you you need to add green and that's then going to be disastrous for you because you're going to end up with really gray ashy eyebrows um, and you're going to feel like you're not going to know why that happened because you're following the artist color wheel and the same for um, if somebody has got orange brows on the normal artist color wheel if their brows have gone really orangey it tells you to add blue um, and right. with, obviously with permanent makeup we tend to add more orangey based um, colours in in these range of pigments anyway so um, for me that is far more well it's, it's accurate for permanent makeup we're not trying to adapt a artist colour wheel for painting um, and the other thing that I actually thought about was we're only trying to make brown that's all we're trying to do for brows in right. any case we're just trying to make brown. So this will help you if you've got a funky colour 
um, or your client's skin, you can see some um, underlying colors in their skin. This will help you choose the pigment, which will just give you brown. Makes sense, doesn't it? Sometimes we overcomplicate things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just try to make brown. <laughs> just make brown. I love it. I love it. So oh. then we're going to do a third one, right? Yes. And talk we're about the last one. Another kit. one. Um, we're going to do another video, you and I, Mary, on the third kit um, for the tones of permablends upside down. The third kit, which is for your Fitzpatrick five to six. And when, when we last spoke, we were discussing that actually I use these sometimes for eyeliners as well because they're really nice um, brown yep. black set. They're quite warm, but not overly warm to um, give you red residue at the end of your pigment, um, your eyeliner life. But yeah, so you'll be able to use these for both uh, dark skins in the brow and also eyeliners as well. Because you were mentioning to me that actually you quite like doing the stardust liner. So maybe having a black base through the eye line, uh, the lash line, and then coming out with your stardust liner, maybe a little bit browner. Absolutely. Because again, my, you know, Midwest light skinned girls, we, I've, I do some pink, some purples, you know, I've got, I've got girls that want to be artistic and we do some yeah. fun stuff like that. But the majority of my girls like the nice black with yeah. a little bit of brown above it. And it's just very neutral and beautiful and they can do whatever they want with it after that. So yeah, yeah. You gave away the spoiler alert because I was going to play some of these and find my <laughs> Sorry, favorite one Mary. for eyes. <laughs> We won't speak about those kits anymore. We won't have anything to speak about on Saturday. Yeah, so so I'll let you know what my favorite colors are for that. We'll yeah, do the do, next segment. Because you were saying that your favorite color of kit one was um, the Diamond Pearl, the really ashier yep. color. And we know now that your favorite colors of set two are Blowout Brown and Tea and Toast. Same with Absolutely. me. Um, so, yeah, Absolutely. Yes. So you find out what your favorite colors are of set three. We'll, we'll compare them. We'll see if they're the same as well. <laughs> okay. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> so we will talk to you soon then. Yeah. Look forward to it, Mary. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.